Assalamu alaikum, this is Muhammad Yasser Arafat and in this video we are going to discuss grade 9 physics chapter number 2 that is kinematics and in this video we will be discussing the entire topic as per AQAP syllabus. In this video we are going to uh, cover state of body, tires of motion, tires of translatory motion and the characteristics of motion. So remember, the state of body usually contains uh, rest and motion, and the characteristic of motion usually is associated with the basic terms uh, that is related to the motion. So you can see uh, this is the syllabus that is provided by Aga Khan University Examination Board, and here uh, they have given you the subtopics and the syllabus that a student needs to be covered as per student learning outcome. Before start, we must know what is kinematics. If we see kinematics, it is basically the branch of physics that usually deals with the change in state of a body without impact of a force. So that means if uh, we are going to discuss the kinematics that usually is associated with the change in the state of body means that either the body would be converting from the rest to motion or the, uh, or the body will be converting into motion to rest. And in all the process, we will not be discussing the impact of the force. So we must also know uh, the characteristics of kinematics. Kinematics basically depends on the position of a body, surrounding of a body, and then time. So whenever we are explaining any term that is associated with the kinematics, we need to focus on these three points, okay? So without, these, uh, without any of these points, we won't be able to uh, describe that particular term Pro, uh, with the proper uh, logic. So we need to follow these three points that is associated with the kinematics mainly. So first we will be discussing the state of body here. As we know that there are two states of body, one is rest and other one is motion. So whenever we are discussing about the rest, the state of rest means that when a body does not change its position. So here you can see the position is highlighted. As we all know that the position is one of the characteristics of kinematics. And it further it says with respect to its surrounding and time that is called a state of rest. So if a body is not changing its position with respect to time and the surrounding. So that means we will be uh, tagging that state of a body as a state of rest. So here position, surrounding and time both are highlighted. So that means these are the characteristics of kinematics that needs to be used to define any term that is associated with the kinematics. Same thing we have done with the motion. And you can see that it says when a body changes its position so, whenever we are discussing motion, just remember we need to use the term position, the change in position here, okay? So, without using these terms, we won't be able to comply the, com uh, the basic uh, concept behind, the, uh, d uh, behind these, these terms. So, when a body changes its position with respect to surrounding and time that is usually called motion. We are going to discuss the types of motion. So we are going to discuss the types of motion. As we all know that the there are three types of motion. One is translatory motion. In translatory motion we usually say that when a body changes its position with respect to surrounding and time and acquires an entirely new position that is called a translatory motion. So that means when, a, when an object is falling, 
this is an example of a transferred motion how when an object is falling from a certain height at every instance you can see that the that object is acquiring entirely new position and during the change in position so when when that that falling object is in motion and it is it is acquiring new position that could be considered as a transitory motion there is another example that is a flying insect if you see a, a flying insect that that should be moving uh, randomly and when it is moving randomly it usually again changes its position in in all directions and in every time you will see that that insect is acquiring entirely new position when it is in motion and one more example is a car turning in a roundabout this also could be considered as a transitory motion so the second part is a rotatory motion so when you see a rotatory motion it says that the change in state of a uh, change in position of a body with respect to its surrounding and time by following a circular path by making sure that the body should remain in contact with the center of the circle when it is acquiring a rotatory motion there is an example of motion of a ferris wheel only motion of a fan even though motion of any tap or motion of any wheel so these are the examples of a rotatory motion remember the motion of a rider in a ferris wheel will not be considered as the rotatory motion that could be considered as a transitory motion we will be discussing this uh, this change in motion state of motion of body in another video so the third one is vibratory motion so in vibratory motion you will see that the change in position will occur around a fixed position that could be considered as a vibratory motion so in vibratory motion you will see an example of a swinging pendulum or any object that is swinging uh, that could be considered as a vibratory motion so now we are going to discuss types of transitory motion so if types of transitory motion there are three types of transitory motion that is linear curvilinear or rectilinear motion so the all of these names are of same type uh, so we will be we can name linear motion uh, as the first type of motion so in this type of motion it usually says that the when a body changes its position by following a straight path or a curved path that is usually named as linear motion or you can see them as a curvilinear or a rectilinear motion so there is an example when a boy is walking and the boy is walking and it is changing its position from a to b and then going back to c so this type of motion usually could be considered as a transitory motion when a body is acquiring entirely new position at every instance when it is uh, during its entire journey so there is another part that, that is for circulatory motion in a circulatory motion or the circular motion you will see that the body is changing its position and acquires new entirely new position by following a circular path so you can see the motion of a rider in a ferris wheel so the motion of a rider in a ferris wheel could be considered as a circular motion remember that in this type of motion the body or the object will not be remain in contact with the center of the circle
So the third part is random motion. So in random motion, you will see that the body move will be changing its position by following a random path. So that means its direction will not be specific. Usually this type of motion could be observed in flying insects or the motion of a gas molecule. You can see that the, um, the some balls are placed inside a container. So these are representing us some sort of molecule that is placed inside a container. And inside the container and the, when the gap, gap is opened, these molecules is continuously more changing its position in different direction. They are not following this specific path here. So this could be named as a random motion. So last but not the least, that is characteristics of motion. Motion. We will be discussing about the terms that that is associated with the motion. The first is distance. So, when we are defining a distance, we will be saying that the change in position without following any specific path or a specific direction with respect to its surrounding that is called distance. For that, you can see. We are marking two points. One is named as origin and other one is named as destination. So when a body is moving from origin to destination without by following random path or by not following any specific direction, it is reaching from origin to the destination. So this sort of chain in position could be considered as a distance. So here you will, will see that the direction is con continuous, was continuously changing uh, when the body is moving from the origin to destination. Remember that the, the SI unit for the distance is meter, so that is why its unit is written alongside the, its name. So the new uh, Part A new definition is for displacement and in displacement we will see the change in position in a specific direction between two points. So here is an origin and destination and in origin and destination you will see that the body is changing its position by following a specific route by not changing its direction at any point. So that type of change in position would be considered as displacement. Like distance, displacement also is having a same unit that is called meter. And meter is represented by m that is written inside along with the heading. So the third term is our speed and speed means the rate of change in distance. As we see in this particular animation that the car was in a stop and it is certainly starts moving. When it, it has a start its motion, it is following a curve path and it is moving towards the right hand side. It is turning towards the right hand side. So it suggests us that the position is changing by, by not following any specific direction. So here the distance would be used. And when we are taking the rate of change in distance, that could be considered as the speed of a body. And remember the speed, the SI unit for the speed is meter per second. And the formula for this calculation of speed is D equals average VAVE multiplied by time. So VAV means average velocity. Remember, that average velocity could be considered as a speed of a body. The next part is called velocity. Velocity means the rate in change in uh, rate of change in displacement. So that means in this particular animation, you can see that the snail, um, the motion of a snail. Few are moving faster, few are moving slower. So here. This, the motion of the snail is suggesting you that the, when an object is changing its position by following single 
path and the rate of change in uh, position could be considered as velocity here. Remember, the magnitude of velocity will always be smaller than the magnitude of a speed. So, whenever we are taking the average velocity, that could become equal to the speed of a body. So, these are the two points that needs to be remembered. Like speed, velocity also has a unit that is meter per second. And here is the last term that is acceleration and the SI unit for the acceleration is meter per second is square. So the definition suggests that the rate of change in velocity would be named as acceleration. So the formula is given here A equals Vf minus Vi upon T. So Vf is standing for the final velocity and Vi is standing for the initial velocity. When we are getting the change in velocity, that means we will be doing the subtraction of initial velocity from the final velocity and then we will be dividing that value by time we will be getting the acceleration. So whenever we are discussing about the change in velocity, that means that they, that change could be take place as increasing change or it could be a decreasing change. When we see an increasing change in velocity, that could be named as a positive acceleration. When we are taking the rate of change in rate of increase in velocity, that could be named as a positive acceleration. And remember, the magnitude of positive acceleration will always be in positive. So there is another term that is called retardation, deceleration or negative acceleration. So these are the, uh, these are the names of same term that is called usually retardation, deceleration or the negative acceleration. We, we, can name, we can use any one of these three names. Remember, whenever we, we see the rate of decrease in velocity that could always be named as velocity uh, retardation because the day when our decrease, uh, velocity decreases so the rate of uh, uh, decrease in velocity could be considered as retardation so here whenever we are dealing with the retardation or deceleration remember that the magnitude of the acceleration will always be negative here so whether we are going to calculate accelerate, positive acceleration or retardation, we are going to use the same equation of motion that is given as A equals Vf minus Vi all upon T. All from this video, if you want to see our new video, you can follow us. Thank you.